Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from J and H Aerospace. This is installment one of presumably uh, planning to do a six-part series here on reviewing the various kits available for the Science Olympiad Right Stuff event for the 2019-2020 contest seasons. This is uh, during this period. It's for high school, so Division C. Um, and the rules have been a little interesting over over this year. So before I get into discussing the kits that we're going to review, I've laid out the progression of our own kit, the uh, Senior Flyer, um, to discuss some issues. Because unfortunately, before I get in and start talking about the other designs out there, we need to have a discussion about the giant elephant in the room, um, which you may or may not be aware of, which is the rules set for this year. And in short, it stinks. So the rules set is dictates a three and one eighth inch propeller, maximum diameter. Uh, you're allowed biplanes, decent size, not huge. Um, and then the stabilizer is this tiny little thing. This is the maximum dimensions allowed for the stabilizer. And if you look at it relative to the wing, it is quite small, especially on a biplane, because on a biplane, just imagine doubling the size of wing for a normal wing, and then you'll understand how small this tail is, particularly in relation to this propeller. And this, because of the small propeller, you need a really, really long rubber motor. And in fact, this is about how long, so we're talking like that. So a typical model um, like this one, this is a more standard length motor stick. This is what we, the Series 1 Senior Flyers that we introduce, uh, have this motor sti stick to make it easier for beginners to be able to get that long rubber motor to unwind. And the problem is that you have this narrow, if you just draw a cylinder back from your propeller, you have what's called slipstream. It's high, the high velocity weight coming off of your propeller. And on a normal airplane, that slipstream is fairly large, so we'll imagine a much larger propeller, creates a cylinder back here during in which, across several different angles of attack, the stabilizer is going to see similar air movement. The problem comes in when you have a much smaller slipstream like this on a long airplane, a very much smaller movement change in angle of attack can move the stabilizer completely above or below the propeller wash. And that makes the airplanes extremely difficult to trim, particularly when you have this very small stabilizer as well, which produces much less pitch damping than ordinarily is the case. You have long rubber motors stretched out over great lengths. This is not an exceptionally long motor stick. Um, which means that this airplane has lots of moment of inertia, very little damping, and highly non-linear damping. And because of that, these airplanes are very difficult to trim as it is, in addition to the fact that the bonus for flying these airplanes, uh, as far as the, the, you know, the special action bonus in right stuff this year, is if you fly your first flight, to in one direction, left or right, we'll say left for sake of argument, and then your second one the opposite direction, so that would be to the right in this case, uh, without a test flight in, in between with the same airplane without replacing any parts, then your flight time becomes your two flights added together rather than merely the longest of your two flights. The issue with that is due to the difficulty in, in maintaining stability of these airplanes, that becomes extremely difficult and unreliable. And in addition, due to the small propeller, highly nonlinear pitch dynamics, etc., heavily loaded propeller that easily stalls out, if there's any air movement from even light air conditioning, the airplanes become almost unflyable. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't make a big thing of that. I would simply say we're going to design around it. However, the issue remains that Science Olympiad leadership have chosen to create this situation. 
there are many, many mentors within the model aviation community who have worked with Science Olympiad students over the past uh, 23 years, roughly, that, it, that, it's, that uh, some version of Right Stuff has been around. I would describe it as probably the most successful volunteer mentoring program in the United States for school-age students, period. Because all of these people do this out of the goodness of their heart to try to expand the knowledge of model aviation to these students, help them on their careers, and so on, and they receive nothing in return. Now, why that is an issue? Myself, obviously, I'm a commercial interest now, but all of us in the model aviation community have expressed angst over this set of rules. And rather than try to work with us, Science Olympiad leadership, including a person, all of these people are supposedly part of the model aviation community. Um, instead of trying to work with us and ask how would we do better in the future, their response has basically been to tell us that we are a bunch of ungrateful wretches. So, what, I, what you need to understand as a viewer who may or may not be involved in Science Olympiad, if you have some involvement in Science Olympiad, let them hear your voice. Let them hear the negativity that they deserve. Because their retaliatory behavior towards us who have tried to help these students is completely unacceptable. It's the, it's and it's unprovoked. We have tried to provide input in the past, and we have been rejected and rejected and rejected. And in spite of the constant, oh well, we're very thankful for all the mentors who helped these students. Well, if you're so thankful, then take our advice when we tell you that you done screwed up. I'm sorry to make this video so negative, but that's the situation I'm dealing with. I have, um, I, I have, when the draft rules came out, I sent, um, I, I re received a copy, we'll just leave it at that, I received a copy the day that the rules were made public to, well, were made available to coaches. So the moment that they came, were viewed by someone outside the rules committee, I got access to those rules. And I then sent them to um, two other manufacturers. Dave Ziegler already. Dave Ziegler got his copy of the rules the same time I got mine. Um, and we all expressed angst at this uh, in terms of what in the world is this? Um, Andrew Welter, second place winner at, uh, in right, st right stuff at the Nats uh, last season, um, within a couple days was emailing me asking me what the heck is this? because we all looked at the rules and universally agreed this is insane and in spite of of that science olympiad has proceeded forward with this and not only that has told us to shut up and go away so um i'm not going away because this pay this helps pay put food on my table and to be very clear um as a businessman I, when I'm speaking about the negative, the, the negative issues of these rules, I'm not speaking as a businessman because it doesn't affect me. Because the truth is that two major designers and mentors historically um, who have designed planes for Science Olympiad, uh, for, for Right Stuff, came to me this year and said, these rules are stupid, I'm done, I'm not designing Science Olympiad planes anymore. So, look. I'm benefiting financially from that, and I'm still not happy with it, because the issue is not financial. The issue is ethical. And I don't care if I sell more or less kits as a result of the design of the rules. I care about the students being able to have a successful building and flying experience. And due to the complexity of this, the rules this year, the thing that we're constantly told that students should be building and should be designing rather than building from kits, that has been rendered useless because, I'm sorry, a kid cannot design, a kid that has no aeronautical experience cannot come up with this adjustable tail mechanism like this. This is the result of engineering work. And 
the notion that students should be the notion that students should be designing their own airplanes has been something that Science Olympiad leadership constantly talk about. Don't build kits, design your own planes. And the Ward's science kits that are grossly overpriced, that you know, that are a hundred bucks and include about thirty dollars worth of materials, are put out there with that philosophy. They don't include a design that's even legal for the rules. You have to, you know, bodge something together. And students with this rule set can't do that. They can't be successful. Um, so Science Olympiad has set its students up for failure. And that, therefore, we run into the same situation as always. Students with the best coaches win. Um, so there's my rant. Um, happier note, uh, I have gotten planes that fly well. So the original, uh, this was the version one senior flyer, a um, little short, you know, not a, not a super long airplane. I got it to fly over a minute in both directions. Um, decided that it was a little bit on the uh, short side. So I created something longer, which is this. Originally, I flew this only as a biplane, and I hated its guts because it didn't fly exceptionally well. I took the upper wing off and flew it as a monoplane, and I'm getting the same flight times that I got from my old biplane, except that actually it is a little easier to fly. Um, I like flying this airplane. It's kind of fun. Um, it's a pain in the neck because of the, the trimming process with a little propeller. Um, but the airplane looks nice in the air. It flies surprisingly slowly despite the, uh, the high weight of, of 8 grams. A nice flying airplane. Um, one thing I did do to kind of reduce the, the stupid levels was, if you can see, the, this is the Mod 3 Senior Flyer right here. You can see I shortened it up by about 3 inches. Um, and that has resulted in a little bit better flying of an airplane. Uh, so I shortened both the tail boom and the motor stick. and um, so you don't lose a huge amount of motor, uh, motor stick length or tail boom length. You, you kind of take a little from both and you get a, a nice flying result here. This is about the same length as the, uh, the Freedom Flight uh, airplane. Um, seems to be a nice kind of compromise length. And then of course the monoplane version here, um, whose wing I have put on backwards because I wasn't paying attention. Um, and that's just embarrassing and it's going to bug the snot out of me. But the, uh, the bottom line is a uh, nice flying airplane. Um, again, typical flight times, about uh, 70 seconds or maybe a little bit longer. Um, I have not, you know, once I got my 70 second flights, I was kind of like, okay, I've done what I need to do. Yeah, there are people that are doing um, in the minute 40, minute 50 range, cool beans. Um, you know, I, I get it. I know that's possible. I, I don't have time or motivation to pursue it. Uh, the bottom line is I, I, I got to the point I have a nice flying airplane and I said, all right, that's good. Um, so anyway, the, the bottom line is it is possible to be successful under this year's rules uh, in spite of the fact that the rules are crap. Um, and my, my primary issue is not even the rule set, it's the behavior of Science Olympiad leadership in response to um, the outcry against the rules. Um, you know, that's where it is. So, let's set my airplanes aside and let's talk about the other ones that are out there. Because there's some cool airplanes. So we're going to review uh, four airplanes. So this is the Sire Relief. <laughs> that is one of the greatest names ever for a kit. Um, this is from uh, John McGrath at lasercutplanes.com. Um, neat little airplane. He has his own little take on how to do some of this stuff. So um, looking forward to building this one out. Um, when I ordered this kit from John, he included this note, uh, something to the effect of, Hi Josh, not liking these rules. <laughs> so um, my one concern is there is a piece of laser cut stuff that was kind of loose in the package and I hope that didn't come out of the bagging if uh, well if that'll come out in the review we'll, we'll talk about it um, packaging is part of the kit um, this is the 2020 right stuff minnow from retro RC uh, cute little airplane is based on Lloyd Shales's minnow design they had one of these for last year's rules and then they introduced uh, an, an airplane called the katana 
um, that was for that was you know a higher performance design. I did not review it uh, just because I felt like it was very similar to the uh, laser cut planes design. Uh, hindsight, I should have reviewed it because you know it's there and gone. Uh, and then of course we've got the, uh, the the famous Freedom Flight kit, which is you know, the still the the more popular uh, right stuff kit uh, of, of all of these. And then lastly, the uh, Guru prop plane, very <laughs> very simple labeling there, very unimaginative name. Um, so like the the laser cut and retro RC kits, I have not opened up uh, because they're you know bagged. Whereas these guys are in boxes, so a Freedom Flight kit I already opened up. I've read um, a little bit of what's in there, not a whole lot, uh, but very detailed information contained in here is, you know, the usual Dave Ziegler stuff. There's uh, these blocks over here. They're taped in on the side. He's got three different sizes of, of rubber. I mean, very, very complete kit, as always. Um, Dave's kits are... Uh, expensive and they are very very high quality very detailed instructions and, and so on um, and then the um, guru plane is the uh, in terms of on a per plane pricing I think is the lowest price I'm not can't remember the minnow may be less uh, I think they're about the same price because the minnow is in the 30 mid 30 dollar range. This is 33 dollars, um, and the you know the Guru planes are designed basically to be the lowest cost per plane possible and still get a flyable, reasonably competitive airplane. And I think um, that business model has worked very very well for John Hans. Um, includes two just absurdly long fuselage sticks here that are made from actually very nice um, it's light balsa but it it's, looks like it's been graded so it seems to be pretty good he includes one size of rubber he includes all you know written instructions full size plans and, and whatnot so uh, pretty cool airplane um, I have not quite honestly I have seen of the kits out here, I've seen lots of Freedom Flight kits. I've seen a decent number of our kits, the Senior Flyer, um, and I've seen one of the Laser Cut kits, and it was not built well in terms of not the, the kit quality, the the skill level of the builder. It was warped all, and I don't think it flew. Could be wrong, um, but it didn't look like it was going to fly. So that's kind of you know I don't know. Basically, there's only one of these at this table that I know how it's going to fly because I've seen it fly, and the others I, I have not. So um, each one has their own little mechanism for dealing with the turn, although I don't think this one includes that provision, so may get dinged on that. You know, we're going to try to give an objective review and just explain what what's what. So uh, with that, that's the end of our intro uh, to the reviews for these airplanes. And so, uh, wait for the next installment. We will probably uh, start with the laser cut kit because um, it's the one I'm most excited about. Because I, laser cut planes makes really cool stuff, and it's not about the flying experience to me. It's like I like seeing how he solves the the problems with his designs. So anyway, um, hope you enjoy the upcoming reviews, and I hope that I haven't been too negative, but I hope at the same time that you've learned what we're up against in the model aviation community in dealing with Science Olympiad Incorporated. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.